Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today I've got my intro to the Infiltrator class certification guide. This is basically going to help you guys get started uh, with where to put your certification points, where I think they are good to start out with, and uh, my opinions on where to go in the long run. Now regardless of how you want to play the Infiltrator, I think there is one upgrade that uh, without a doubt is my favorite upgrade and something that you can get right from the start and that is the proximity mines. They're called Claymores for TR and Bouncing Betty's for NC. They're a little bit pricey, but worth every single cert point. The first level is 200 certification points. It allows you to carry one proximity mine. The great thing about proxy mines is that you don't have to replace anything. You're not swapping out grenades for proximity mines. You get to carry both. The second level of proximity mines costs 400 certification points and it allows you to carry two proxy mines. I think this is also a worthwhile upgrade. Being able to carry two allows you to say, uh, barricade two doors or mine two doors to the entrance to a key room in a facility. Uh, proxy mines don't go away when you die, so they're extremely useful. I almost always get kills every time I put down a proximity mine. Now, in the start, using just a few certification points, you can upgrade your passive systems, the advanced equipment terminal hacking to level one. It only costs one certification point, and it increases your hacking speed by 10%. It's so cheap that you may as well get it. The next level costs 30 cert points, and depending on how much you're hacking, you could go for that in the start, but I still haven't really upgraded that one beyond level two. Moving down the list, we come to the tool slot with the recon detect device. This is basically that little gun that looks like some sort of medical applicator from Star Trek or something. Uh, it shoots a little dart, and that dart then sends out a signal and will locate people on the map. So it works like a little uh, location device. If you put 30 points into the first level, you can increase the scan rate and range of the sensor dart. Not bad. Uh, it depends how much you're using it again. Ultimately, you would like to upgrade this to a pretty high level if you're playing Infiltrator a lot. But for the most part, I want to focus on the combat aspect of the Infiltrator and the first level of the dart is definitely adequate for trying to sense guys within a room or something like that. So at its first level, it's already very functional and depending on how you want to spend your cert points, you can get it to the top levels, but it's probably something that I'm going to save for once I've upgraded some of my more basic attributes. Next on the list, we have the ability slot, which is your two cloaking devices. You can either go with the hunter cloaking device, which increases the rate at which your cloak recharges after you're done using it, or you can go with the nano armor cloaking, which at its first four levels uh, increases the duration that your cloak will last. And then if you upgrade it all the way to the last level, it will increase your armor by, or it'll reduce the damage you take by 10%. Whichever way you decide to go on the cert tree, I don't think you're going to be too disappointed. The Hunter Cloaking device is only 10 certification points right at the beginning, uh, so I threw 10 points into that. At the start, I think I'm ultimately going to rank up the Nano Armor Cloaking, but Cloaking is still very good from the beginning that I didn't feel the need to sink a lot of cert points into it, and I saved them for my weapons and the proximity mines. Now speaking of weapons, you need ammo to run them, and in the beta of this game, the Infiltrator got a nice chunk of ammo so you could really go out on your own into the wilderness and really just snipe people for days on end if you wanted to. You really didn't have too many ammo concerns, but now you really are very limited in ammo with the Infiltrator, especially for your bolt action rifles. You're going to run through that ammo quite quickly if you're shooting liberally. So after I purchased proximity mines, I then got the ammunition belt. It's extremely expensive. I wish the devs didn't charge so much for the ammo belt. I don't know why they make it uh, so much more pricey over the other certs in the beginning of the game for the suit slot. But anyway, the first level only gives you one extra magazine for your primary and secondary. Secondary magazines are actually really important for the infiltrator. You'll be using your pistol a lot. Now because it does take time to save up the 150 certification points for this, you can put one point into something like flak armor or advanced shield capacitor in the meantime just because it's only one cert point and it'll still give you a little bit of a benefit while you're working up to that 150. Now the reason why I ignore advanced shield capacitor, flak armor, and nano weave armor is that the infiltrator is not designed to take damage. You already have 100 hit points less than any other class and trying to upgrade your shield capacitor or nano weave armor or flak armor is really just going to sort of be 
putting a band-aid on his uh, lesser health situation. The whole concept with the infiltrator is to not get hit. So just ignoring those armor aspects and going for ammo instead, I think is a much better option. You can stay alive longer with the infiltrator. You'll make much better use out of having extra ammo. Now we come down to the grenade slot. Now my ultimate problem with the grenade slot is that they don't allow you to equip these grenades here on top of your normal grenade. The normal grenade is already extremely good. It allows you to kill people. You throw the grenade, it blows up, people die. Pretty darn good grenade if you ask me. Now they're asking you if you want to pay a significant amount of cert points, 200 cert points for an EMP grenade or 150 cert points for a decoy grenade to replace your normal frag grenade. Neither of these grenades kill your opponent. They can distract them with the decoy grenade. When you throw a decoy grenade, it makes sounds of somebody firing and it pings on the minimap so it looks like there's a soldier there. This could be a, a, a novel little distraction, perhaps distract one or two enemies. Uh, does it outweigh the destructive power of a frag grenade? In my opinion, no. Then we have the EMP grenade. When the EMP grenade detonates, it takes away all of your opponent's shields and it takes away their heads up display. So if they have a targeter or a shield thing or a mini map, all of that just goes away. So they literally don't see anything. They can still shoot though. So if you try and sneak up on them while their shields are down and they have decent hip fire or aiming down sight accuracy, they can still shoot you. Uh, I know I wouldn't be that disadvantaged in close quarter combat without my heads up display. However, having no shields is a big disadvantage. But you have to ask yourself, you know, would I rather take away their shields or would I rather have the potential to kill them with a frag grenade? Now, I believe the EMP grenade blast radius is a bit larger, so there could be some benefits here and there. But again, asking somebody to pay 200 cert points for the ability to take away shields uh, and giving up your ability to potentially kill somebody with a grenade is a pretty big trade-off in my opinion. Ultimately, I think the whole grenade setup in this game is flawed. If they just allowed you to equip additional grenades to your normal frag grenade, then you would have use for these more interesting grenades and you wouldn't have to sacrifice your ultimately useful frag grenade. So an EMP grenade plus a frag grenade, then that would be worthwhile. You could throw an EMP grenade in somewhere, then throw a frag grenade, their heads up display would be gone, they wouldn't be able to see the little marker for the frag grenade, uh, and they would detonate and destroy them. That would be an awesome combo, but sadly we can't equip both. So until we get the ability to equip grenades in addition to our frag grenade, I can't really recommend either the EMP or decoy grenade for the most part. Now I normally don't talk too much about guns in my certification guides for classes just because that's a very preferential thing. However, with the infiltrator, um, certain weapons are just very necessary or very powerful to get in the beginning. If you're a TR or the Vanu Sovereignty, you probably want to buy your class's first bolt action rifle. I'm using the V10 here for the Vanu. And the great thing about this rifle is that it allows me to kill my opponents in one shot if I hit them in the head. This is incredibly useful for long range shooting. You'll also notice that in some of these clips I've been firing an automatic weapon, like right here. This is the Artemis battle rifle. Each faction has one battle rifle. They have 20 rounds in a magazine and do 250 damage per shot. These are pretty useful guns at medium range and close quarters, so if you want to be a little bit more aggressive with the recon, not rely too much on a bolt action weapon, then this is a great option. If you want to be aggressive with a bolt action rifle, I'd recommend getting the laser sight upgrade to improve your hip fire. You'll notice that throughout these clips I've gotten several kills by hip firing a bolt action sniper rifle. I'd also recommend trying out some of the heavier duty pistols for your faction, maybe even looking into suppressors. You're going to be using your pistol a lot in close quarter combat if you're using your bolt action rifle. Because the pistol can be used on all classes, it's still a really good upgrade to get. So I'd recommend uh, looking into your guns a lot in the beginning, potentially even before you look into some of your more expensive certs like proximity mines. So that pretty much wraps up my certification guide for the infiltrator. In conclusion, it's a very weapon dependent class, so spend your certs on your guns and ammunition. I have some of the other class guides linked in the video description if you're interested in the engineer heavy assault or light assault. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap. Signing off.